Yes, hello everyone and welcome to the session about packet analyzers. Uh, I'm Jan and together with Tim, I will tell you a bit about a very exciting new feature in Zeek, uh, the packet analyzers. Um, I'm a PhD candidate at KIT um, and at KIT we do not only uh, just add uh, emojis to log files, but uh, we are also concerned with um, adding new features to network monitoring and uh, I'm in particular interested also um, in performance aspects of network monitoring. So I've been active in the Zeek community for quite some time. I um, did a few contributions like the AF packet plugin and was involved in some parts of the intelligence framework. And um, yeah, at KIT, we um, started to work a bit on packet analyzers and um, the work we present here is based on a master thesis of Peter Oettig, um, I advised here at KIT. So um, let's start into the topic. If you want to extend the capabilities um, with regards to protocol passing or packet handling in Zeek, um, so far, there are two options. Uh, at first, you can write your own protocol analyzer. Um, that's the interface for application layer protocols. Uh, Zeek so far supports TCP and UDP based protocols. Um, the suitable analyzer for a protocol is uh, either determined port based or signature based. Uh, signature based is using the dynamic protocol detection. Um, so um, that's a very cool feature. If you want to monitor a protocol that's on an uncommon port, uh, you can just define a signature for that protocol. Um, Zeek will match the signatures um, and eventually will be able to attach the right analyzer for that protocol, although it didn't know it's on that port. Examples for application layer protocols are of course HTTP, uh, TLS, SSL analyzer, but um, there are also uh, some analyzers that are rather new, um, MQTT or SMB. Then there's uh, another interface um, you can use. Um, that's an interface for packet acquisition. Um, that is the packet sources interface. So you can write a packet source plugin um, and that allows you to define how the package should um, go into Zeek. Um, usually, for example, if you just um, analyze uh, PCAPs, you will use something like the libpcap to get the um, packets into Zeek, but there are um, other libraries um, and interfaces like AF packet, PF ring, or netmap. Um, and the pro about these is usually that they come with load balancing, so you can set up your own machine cluster um, using these technologies. But the remaining stack is um, hard coded so far. So if you want um, to somehow extend Zeek um, with, with respect to internet or link layer protocols, um, you will have to touch um, the, uh, Zeek's core code. Uh, and of course, um, that's not so desirable. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's also hard to maintain uh, if yeah, the code base um, uh, starts to grow uh, by adding uh, more and more protocols. So uh, our goal was to extend Zeek to support um, yeah, uh, a new interface um, to extend Zeek with plugins that uh, allow to implement low level, low level protocols. Uh, so far, um, Zeek covers hard-coded protocols like ARP, Ethernet, or FPTI, also some Wi-Fi protocols or some formats um, uh, for captures that are uh, a bit special. And of course, um, we want to keep that functionality. So uh, we want to provide built-in analyzers for these, but uh, we also want to open up Zeek so others can write plugins um, and yeah, support other protocols. And that should open a door for a lot of use cases. Um, for example, IoT protocols, uh, ICS protocols, uh, there's a whole range of um, new options that are opened up here. Um, and the cool thing about this is if you have a protocol previously not known to Zeek, 
um, you're not starting from scratch, but you will also be able to use the protocol stack that's already implemented in Zeek. I will um, go into a bit of detail uh, in the next slide. Um, so obviously extending Zeek and um, bringing more flexibility um, might come at some cost. So we have requirements um, at first performance. We don't want to um, seriously uh, infer with uh, current Zeek performance. Um, we want to provide that flexibility so that you don't have to touch um, the core code of Zeek to extend Zeek. Um, and of course, we want to uh, provide a good usability. So um, now let's have a look at the general uh, architecture we came up with or we extended. So on the left, um, you see the three typical Zeek layers. Um, you have the packets uh, that go into the event engine um, that generates, uh, generates the high level events um, that are then processed by scripts, uh, which yeah, generate the logs or um, notifications. And if we now zoom into the event engine, um, we see in the top, there's the file analysis, um, there's the application protocol analysis, um, where we have um, the, the tree of protocol analyzers um, that's built up by dynamic protocol detection. Um, you can see uh, the protocol uh, identification analyzer here that's built up. Um, and um, then uh, down you have the packet source and um, what's, what's new here is um, that we have the part of packet analysis. Um, so uh, from the packet source, the packets will go into a root analyzer um, and from there on um, they will be processed by new or the old analyzers say, uh, or new analyzers you, you can add. For example, here, uh, quite a typical um, stack we have here, Ethernet, VLAN, IP. Um, what you see in the middle here is um, that there's uh, a bit of blurry um, here, area here. Um, while we are in the process of getting IP turned into uh, a packet analyzer um, further on the roadmap, um, there's everything that's uh, yeah, concerned with uh, sessions, TCP, and UDP. So um, if you look at current master branch, um, you won't see anything that goes beyond uh, IP. Um, so now let's um, have a look how the packet analyzers actually work. So if you have a look um, uh, at these low level protocols, um, the typical protocol data unit PDU um, consists of a header and um, a payload that's carrying a PDU of an encapsulated protocol. And the header usually contains uh, addressing information or uh, alike. Um, and in particular, um, there is an identifier usually um, that determines um, what's the next protocol that's carried um, in um, that packet. Uh, so identifying uh, what's the actual payload of uh, this protocol. So um, the dispatching is uh, the important part here uh, because it maps to our requirements. So um, this dispatching part, so determining which analyzer is next, uh, has to be done for every layer for every packet. So it has to be very fast. Um, then we want to have these analyzers as plugins so that you don't have um, to touch Zeek's core code. You can just um, add a plugin to Zeek that uh, might be dynamically loaded um, and add new functionality for parsing a protocol. Um, and if you can add new plugins dynamically, you also have to somehow configure the mapping um, that couldn't be hard coded as well, of course. So um, let's have a look at an example. Um, first, um, a, a small disclaimer the API here is not final. We are actually in the process of discussing how that API should look like. Um, but um, that's what you will find currently on, on master. Um, so uh, what you see here is the configuration for the Ethernet packet analyzer. And um, 
At first, the important part is um, each um, analyzer is identified um, using a tag, uh, which is an enum value. So um, if you have a look at um, one of the first lines, the default analyzer, you can see um, that this analyzer is um, defined by providing a tag of an analyzer. And in that case, it's the tag of the IP analyzer. Um, and what the script uh, now allows you is um, to build up the dispatch map. Um, you can see in, in the bottom of the, the screen here. Um, and the dispatch map for Ethernet, for example, specifies that um, the 0800 uh, identifier will be mapped to the IPv4 uh, analyzer and so on. So um, defining that in script land allows you uh, or um, any user that starts to work with packet analyzers um, to customize the mappings um, and to yeah, customize Zeek in terms of um, the, the analysis process uh, in, with the packet analyzers. Um, some analyzers also uh, define um, yeah, special analyzers. Um, you can see that here um, for the LLC, the logical link control analyzer, um, there are um, some cases in which um, you, you don't have an ID um, to identify which analyzer is next. So um, what uh, a packet analyzer will do in this case, it will just provide a const you can redefine um, to add uh, mappings here. Um, also, if you have a look at the current master, um, be aware there are, or for now, there are a couple of conventions uh, involved uh, in how this configuration is set up. Um, so, for example, the name dispatch map, the naming of the module, that's um, all fixed by convention, but that will likely change. Um, the same for the default analyzer. Um, we are thinking about removing the option for a default analyzer because we think um, if you don't know which analyzer to use, you should not just try one. So now let's have a look um, at uh, an actual packet analyzer. So uh, here you see basically uh, everything that makes up a new packet analyzer. So the important API to consider here is um, the analyze packet method of a new class uh, packet analyzer. And if you now want to implement a packet analyzer, the only thing you have to do is um, implement this class and implement the analyze packet method. Um, the method um, receives the uh, length of um, the data um, that should be processed, uh, pointed to the data, and also pointed to a metadata structure um, that's internal to Zeek um, for uh, storing some metadata, but also for, in that um, example, you can see for triggering uh, weirds. Uh, and that's uh, the first thing we do here in that example. Um, we have a look at the length uh, and see um, whether there's enough data to process for the LLC protocol. It's a very basic um, test case here. You can find that in, in the Zeek uh, test suite, actually. Um, and um, yeah, we just check the length here. Um, and uh, if, if there's enough data to process, we just read out uh, some of the fields in that uh, protocol. The next thing we can do now is we can generate an event that works um, like it would work for um, application layer protocol analyzers. Uh, we just enqueue an event we have defined uh, in a BIF. Um, and that will eventually lead us to an event in Scriptland where we can use uh, that event and process it like any script level event. Um, in that case, we passed uh, the fields uh, uh, we have passed out of the protocol here to that event. Um, however, note if you generate events and packet analyzers, they are obviously generated per packet. So these are um, very expensive uh, packets. Um, the next important API uh, that's not used in that example um, is the forward packet API. 
So in case um, we find an identifier and we have some more data encapsulated uh, in that protocol we are parsing, uh, the only thing we have to do from our analyzer now is to call the forward packet method and um, provide the identifier we have passed out of um, the PDU um, to um, yeah, continue processing um, and uh, Zeek will just manage to call the next analyzer um, and pass that packet on in the chain of packet analyzers and uh, ultimately also in the session analysis and maybe also doing um, uh, analysis uh, of application layer protocols. So um, with that, uh, I hand over to Tim who will talk a bit about the performance. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Tim Rutilowicz. I'm uh, an engineer at Corelight working on the uh, core of Zeek. I spend a lot of time, um, a lot of the code modernization efforts are, are all mine. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, performance improvements and some of the future work coming on with this stuff. Um, first off, these graphs are pretty complicated, but uh, what they say is we tested a bunch of ways to um, do the dispatching for basically saying, I have an identifier, what's my next analyzer in the tree? Um, as you can see, there were about 10 of them. Um, we ended up uh, picking the vector one. It seemed like a good trade off between simplicity in the code and um, performance uh, not losing too much performance in the in the process. Um, for the next slide, you you will see in the next slide uh, these two very obviously uh, pretty boring graphs uh, show that uh, the performance didn't change really at all. Um, is within a half a percent. Uh, memory difference is under well under that. Uh, both of those percent differences are are well within uh, what we consider kind of a noise. Uh, threshold uh, in the benchmarking runs. Uh, we do a benchmark using uh, about five minutes worth of data is very reminiscent of what you would see in a data center um, at about 500 megabits. It takes about two and a half minutes, three minutes to read through all of it. Uh, and like you can see, with the performance really didn't change at all. Um, this is master, uh, Zeek master, and then Immediate, like immediately before merging this packet analysis work and then immediately right after merging the packet analysis work. Um, what that proves is uh, adding this giant feature to allow us to do considerably more uh, packet inspection and, and different things with packets doesn't change how Zeek, uh, how Zeek uh, performs in general. Um, the next part of this is uh, the, the future work. The future work, uh, right now, I've been working for the past maybe month to two months, um, ripping out the IP uh, header analysis out of the, um, the way that we currently do uh, IP header analysis. Uh, right now, it's all hard coded as part of se the session analysis. When you dive into the session analyzers, the first thing we do is parse out all the IP headers, figure out whether you're v6 or v4, um, do all the IP tunnel stuff, GRE, all of that stuff. Um, unfortunately, that 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 forces us to do IP only. So the work here is to rip all of that out, turn it into packet analyzers. Now we can say, um, coming out of an Ethernet analyzer, is this thing IP? If it's not IP, we don't need to go into IP analyzers. If it is IP, we're going to IP analyzers. When you get all the way down to the IP analyzer, it goes back, back into the session analysis as it currently is. Um, this also lets us completely skip all of the GRE code, completely skip all the IP tunnel code if those things don't exist in your packet streams. Um, the IP analyzer handles both IPv4 and IPv6 in, in a single analyzer. Um, we said it, it allows us to chain from one analyzer to the next or skip any one, one or any of them if we need to. Um, this currently has an open pull request. 
Uh, we're pretty close to merging it. Robin looked at it again last night. Uh, I think he approved it. I don't know. Um, again, uh, it's very, very close performance to the existing Z code. I actually have a benchmark running. Uh, I started it right before I, I popped into Zoom, so it should be done by, by about the time we're done here. Um, it's very close to the current current Z code. We shouldn't lose anything at all. Um, the future beyond this analyzer work is moving the TCP and UDP header processing out of out, out of the session analysis. This lets us do things um, like moving all of the UDP tunnel analyzers into packet analysis. Um, unfortunately, what this is going to probably require us to do is talk about uh, what the connection objects look like and um, whether we want to continue having the four tuple or the, the five tuple uh, identifiers for connection packets uh, for connection objects. Um, we had started talking about adding VLAN to that at some point in time in the past. Um, we'd like to make it more generic than that. Moving TCP and UDP out will probably push that talk forward. Um, so hopefully, hopefully by 4.1 or maybe 4.2, we'll have this work done. Um, again, moving the other tunnel land or is out uh, a yeah, GTP, Teredo, VX land, those things are all a uh, tunnel over UDP. Um, we couldn't move them yet, but uh, once the once the UDP analyzer is moved, they can move too. Um, there is one more thing at the end. Uh, this is something Robin has been working on uh, kind of on the side is uh, writing spicy analyzers that uh, that uh, leverage this work. So you can write um, spicy plugins that are actually packet analyzers too. It's not quite there yet. Um, Jan mentioned earlier that the API for packet analysis isn't quite stable yet. Um, that's because of spicy. Uh, we're we're uh, Robin. Robin has spent a little time in it and gone. Yeah, I don't like how some of this works with relation to spicy. So um, there might be some things changing, but that's coming very very soon. Um, I think that's it for us. Uh, we're going to move over into the Slack channel um, to to talk about this. Uh, Jan and I will both be over there. Um, that follow on one more thing is perfect because I believe the next talk is about spicy. So uh, we're gonna head over there and we'll talk to you all in a minute.